everyone. It is Mike with Presentation Plus Ups. Welcome to January 2022. This is going to be a great year. I'm confident of it. This Thursday's presentation tip is going to be focused on something that I like to call the sentient being. So that's basically bringing your presentation to life, getting it away from just being bullet points and flattened graphics and having it breathe, having it feel. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. So excited, let's get started. Welcome to Presentation Plus Ups. Okay, so we're back here. What we're talking about in this presentation tip is really just the idea of bringing your presentation to life, breathing life into it, and it's surprisingly easy to do. I think you're gonna really like this. Now, I call this the sentient being because I want your presentation to have almost a mind of its own. There's gotta be some sort of visual representation that helps your presentation come to life. And it's shockingly easy to do this once you know how. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps and then I can show you how to build it. Here's the concept. We're just gonna use this concept, the sentient being here, and go with me. And first of all, I want you to see this presentation has a little bit of uh, life to it, a little bit of breathing to it. And we'll walk you through how we're doing that. But the first step is this. What you wanna do is just add a shape to your presentation. So what we have here on stage right now is if I just go big with this, is there's a shape. I don't know if you can see that shape. I'm gonna back it up a little bit here and see if you can see what that shape might be. I feel like Dora the Explorer here. But it is, it's a rectangle. It's just a normal rectangle. It's this shape right here, okay? So let's follow that shape as we go through this presentation here. So the second thing you wanna do is you want to set your slide transitions to morph. And I'll walk you through how to do that. But once you have your slide transitions set to morph, it allows objects that persist from slide to slide to either enter the stage, to change shape, to change scale, to change transparency, potentially to change color as we go along. Step three, what you wanna do is you wanna duplicate your slides. So instead of just recreating new slides, you're gonna duplicate it much like an animator would in the 1920s. They would duplicate slides and then set it to motion. Well, we can do that now with PowerPoint. So the shape is what's persisting and that's giving your eyes some visual interest. We're duplicating that slide, changing some text, changing some on-screen graphics to it. And then as you can see, as we go along, we just rearrange the shape and move it around, okay? So that's the concept of the sentient being. I'm gonna start this back at the very beginning of my presentation. I have the sentient being on this presentation. You don't realize it, but I have it full screen and black at this moment, okay? So it's technically living on this slide. You're not even noticing it yet. I'm having content come onto the slide and now I will change that sentient being from being all black and it's sliding in and turning blue. I've just changed the color, changed the shape of it, all right? Using that morph transition, the next one I have it going really thin. That's still a shape, that's still the rectangle and I've changed a little bit of on-screen text. You notice my logo is a little bit uh, smaller and I've changed part of that text box to having the word being change as well. So just adding a little bit of flourish there to it. And now at this point, we've got the shape moving over. We've got the shape changing a little bit, got the shape changing a little bit and last one. So a one, two, three, four sequence. All I've had to do is duplicate that slide and make that happen. It's just, it's shockingly easy to do. And it's a lot of fun when you get into this mode, it's just a lot of fun. So I also wanna say this, so here's the tips if you just went with a traditional slide. Here are the tips for you. If you wanna take a picture of this, feel free to do that, one, two, three, four. But I also wanna show you here that you can also use this sentient being concept on a, a good old fashioned slide. So what I've done is I've duplicated this slide multiple times and just added my sentient being repeating shape to give us some effect. So let's see that in action here. So the first thing is, again, we had it all black, all the way in the, the back layer here. I hit one and it's out of shape. And we can do some other things there. If you wanna highlight 
a specific word, we can have that. If you want to increase the speed of the transition to really highlight one word, for example, like this, boom, I went from a 1.25 second morph transition to a 0.75 morph transition to highlight a word and add some visual emphasis to it. And then back to a 1.25 second morph transition to have a little bit of a highlight there. So hopefully you can see there, if I just back that up, you can really even just take a good old fashioned bullet point presentation and go ahead and use the sentient being there as well. And just adds a little jazz to it, okay? So those are your tips. What I'm gonna do right now is just walk you through some of the background of how we were doing that, okay? So let's just peel back the, the layers here. What I'm gonna do is put my slide presentation into slide sorter mode. So I'm down here, I can uh, go ahead and hit that little tile. I want you to see this. We've duplicated these slides and just changed the object. So I also have on my home menu, I have the selection pane open. So if you can see that over here, I always act, add that to my quick access panel. So this is the, the selection pane. I have this open for a reason because I'm gonna just start here on this first slide and you're gonna notice that I have a rectangle. All right, here's that rectangle. It's technically it's the on the bottom of my layer pile and I have that centered in the back, okay? I've got some words that are gonna slide on and I've got my logo large. Now on the next slide, as I move down here, you're gonna see that I still have my rectangle full, full size. I've slid my logo over a little bit and the words that were off, off stage, I like to think of this as a theater production, that are off stage on slide two are now on stage. They've moved on there. Now I also want you to notice that we have the morph transition set and you would need to select that for each slide that you want the morph transition, or if you do it the way I do, uh, what I would recommend is on the view menu in your slide master is you go ahead and just take your, your top slide master, so not the layouts, but the slide master, and set that to morph. I recommend 1.25 as your base level transition speed. I think the default's two seconds. I think it's a little too slow unless you have a lot of really crazy stuff going on set it to 1.25 and then hit apply to all. All right, so if you do that, then every slide layout that you have in your master will at least have Morph as your default animation engine. So that's, that's a, a, an absolute go-to tip for me. I do that really early on, so that way I don't have to go through slowly. And what I can do then is on slides where I don't want Morph, because sometimes you don't want Morph going on, you might want a push or a zoom transition or whatever you want, there's a lot of different options up in the transitions menu that you can use. Um, yeah, you can set it, but I would highly recommend you do that. I also highly recommend you set the transition uh, tab up here on your quick access panel so you have really just one touch access to anything if you wanna change it from morph to a push or a slide or anything that you can do there. So hopefully you can see, we've got a couple things going. We've got a shape, and as we move through these slides, I want you to see here's our rectangle. It's still all black, it's still full screen. On this slide, that same rectangle is now just changed the shape. And how I've done that, if I wanna just, uh, I'm gonna duplicate this slide for a second so you can see, is if you select that shape, and here's my hands, I'm going to hit shift up arrow. Shift up arrow will make it larger, Shift down arrow will make it smaller, all right? So you actually don't need to do a lot of keyboard, or excuse me, you don't need to do a lot of mouse work in terms of having to slowly grab a handle and move it around. If you just select the item in your selection pane, hold down shift and then up arrow, down arrow, you can do left arrow to make it narrow, right arrow to make it larger. So you can do this very quickly once you know a few of these shortcuts. Okay, so I'm going to delete that one now just so you can see. Let's follow the bouncing ball. And there's our rectangle. And you can see it's highlighted. And I can also turn it on and off if you just want to track it. And, and actually a great tip. So for example, if you're building out a slide where you have your shape full screen and you don't want to keep nudging it and and having it go away is you can actually just turn it off while you're working on the slide. And then when you're ready to bring it back to life, 
turn it on and it's it's back there okay so handy little tip it's not quite like locking and unlocking in something like photoshop or indesign but it's a workaround in powerpoint you essentially are locking it by just making it disabled and at this point you can't touch it because it's technically not there and then you turn it back on and it's there so instead of having to delete it paste it you know rearrange the shape to a different spot you can just go ahead and leave it there. So that's a great tip. I like to have my backgrounds come to life. It really helps you just add that texture to your presentation. Okay, let's follow it along here on the next slide. You can see my rectangle is now very thin. And all I've had to do there is if I select the asset, that shape, I can make it big by holding shift up arrow, or I can make it really small again by holding shift down arrow and I can either tap it one tap at a time or I could just continue holding it, right? And while that object is there, we can move it around by using the up and down arrows too. So I like to use a lot of these keyboard shortcuts because it really helps you just work fast. I mean, that's it's just about working fast and efficient keyboard shortcuts, massive way to do that. All right, next slide, the add the shape. Here's your rectangle. I've just shape shifted it to being here. I added a text box on top of it. I added a little icon from the icon library and, uh, and put that on there, the one, two, three, four, you can see those here and shape shifted my logo a little bit smaller. So you can see the logo went from here to the next slide, it's right here. And it's fun, you can see the transition is still on Morph. So if you make Morph your default engine, it makes, <laughs> it just really makes this a lot of fun, but also visually very powerful, helps boost that overall engagement, all right? I added the, I changed the text box to different text on the next slide. On the next slide, I shape shifted and I actually just uh, rotated the text box and inverted it to add a little something. So a little tip there for you is if you touch the, the text box itself, and instead of hitting shift, you hit alt, and then use your left and right arrows. You can rotate your text box too. So it's just another way. It's almost like flying a helicopter. Once you know how the pedals and the, the foot pedals and the hand pedals work, you can do a lot of rotation within PowerPoint. So super good stuff there. Next slide, follow it along. You can see that the, that the shape went all the way down. And what I did there was I just simply went uh, far right alignment, far down alignment, and just took that text box and changed the text, adjusted the logo. And when you're adjusting these logos or these graphics, all you need to do is right click them, go change graphic from icons. It takes you right back to the icon set and you can select a fresh icon. So if you were on step 10, for example, they have their icons all the way up there and boom, it would be 10. You're gonna notice that the color is the same fill color as previously as well. So super easy once you get the hang of some of these little workflow shortcuts to make something pop, okay? Next slide, now this was my, my bullet point slide. You can see my rectangle still hanging out there. All I did was take it from being bottom right in blue, and it's still on the bottom of the layer pile, and on slide 10, it's now back to a full screen size, okay? Full screen size, there it is. I mean, you could make it whatever size you want to, but it's still part of my living, breathing organism. All I had to do was duplicate this slide to then and rearrange my sentient being from slide to slide. And duplicating a slide is so easy. There's a couple ways you can do it. First thing I recommend is just get the text the way that you want it on your slide. And you can see that we've got that right here. Uh, all you need to do is you can either right click it and do duplicate slide or you can do my favorite which is just control D. So if you have a slide thumbnail selected, you can hit control D and duplicate it. So I would basically just duplicate this. If I want to just recreate this one is let's duplicate it. Let's take our sentient being which is our uh, rectangle. I'm going to change the fill using my quick access toolbar to all blue. And I'm just going to use my shift up arrow, down arrow, and uh, yeah, just kind of size it up. 
And there we got it, okay? So you notice my transition is still set on warp. It's 1.25. So when we go into show mode, so if you're on a slide like slide 10 and you wanna preview it, you can hit Shift F5 to go into presentation mode. And the next right arrow uh, forwarding the slide gets it into that look and feel. So it's just a simple, simple thing you can do leveraging morph, duplicating your slides, and having that type of content. So you can see, I think you can probably get it from there. From there, it's just a matter of creativity. Let's just wrap this up here. Thursday's tip, the sentient being the first step was just add a shape. A shape in this case was just a good old fashioned rectangle. Add that into your overall project. Then you want to set your slide transitions to morph that allows you to have an object that persists from slide one to two, shape shift and change scale, transparency, color, all kinds of good stuff. As you move on, you just duplicate your slides and you can potentially change the pace depending on what you want your sentient being shaped to do for you. And then just rearrange the shape and have some fun as you go, okay? So that was today's Thursday tip, just good old fashioned PowerPoint and a little bit of creativity. Hey, I'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, uh, go ahead, post your comments below. Again, just using our sentient being shape-shifting tip, just had to add a little flourish for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now for the, the duration of this month, I'm going to be on site away from my home studio and we'll be working on a very exciting project for one of the most admired brands in the world, helping them bring their visitor center to life with some experiential learning and development training with a great crew. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring some more of these PowerPoint workflow tips to you. Let me know if you like them or if you go, you know what, this isn't quite what I want presentation plus ups to be. I really want this to be your station. Make sure I'm providing content that's of value to you and in demand to you. Okay, that's today's show. Thank you so much. Please make it a great week.